in this game gary kasparov renders tigran petrosian's pieces helpless and which forces petrosian to resign the game so kasparov is playing with the white pieces here and uh, petrosian tigran petrosian is playing with the black pieces so after the knight to f3 the bishop comes to b4 with a check and the bishop covers the check and the queen come to e7 this is the bogo indian defense the nimzovich variation uh, that is being played right now and after that g3 is played by kasparov intending to fiancet his bishop and uh, after that bishops get uh, exchanged and the queen takes the bishop back and uh, petrosian castles on the king side and bishop to g2 for which this g3 move was played earlier uh, and uh, is played and d5 by petrosian uh, look, going for uh, you know the central control trying to counter uh, kasparov's central control and kasparov goes for castling as of the eighth move so the pawn is now captured and the knight goes to a3 and uh, after that c5 by petrosian attacking that uh, d pawn and the, the pawn captures the pawn and the queen captures back and the rook now comes to c1 attacking this pawn twice knight jumps to c6 and now the pawn is captured and uh, the queen has to uh, have to move because there will be an extra attack on the uh, queen after that so the queen goes back to e7 uh, knight goes to e5 and the knight captures the knight and the knight captures this knight back so in this position there is not much weakness as for black over here but his pieces are not that much active on the queen side pieces especially and uh, uh, Kasparov also have a very good knight on the uh, in the center where the knight are pretty dangerous uh, in these squares so uh, now the Kasparov's idea is not to get this push uh, his knight away and also not to uh, allow Tigran to uh, you know develop his pieces without much damage so knight to d5 is now played with the intent of pushing the pawn to f6 and pushing this knight away so Kasparov uh, brings his uh, rook to d1 and after that the knight goes to b6 uh, not allowing the, uh, you know, uh, so queen goes to a5 here and the presence of the knight here uh, doesn't allow the rook to go here on, onto the 7 track attacking the queen and uh, after that uh, the pawn push to g6 happens. So the idea is to uh, give a little bit of breathing space for the king when you go for the rook exchange because Kasparov's uh, rooks are already in control of the c file and d file. So you would love to get these rooks exchanged because these are uh, you know uh, uh, million dollar rooks in terms of the game because they are pretty active and these rooks are very passive rooks so uh, the idea was to bring the rook to uh, d8 over here but uh, Kasparov had other ideas so he brought his rook to d3 now now uh, if you bring your rook over here Kasparov will bring his queen to c5 over here attacking this queen and uh, with some good uh, ideas uh, on the board so uh, so basically the knight goes to d5 basically trying to uh, prevent this particular line of attack for on the d file for the rook so kasparov needs needed to you know push that knight away from that particular d5 so he pushes his pawn even though this pawn is obstructing the view of or the space of his uh, very good bishop defender bishop which, which also had this good space on the light square diagonal so the knight now again goes back to b6 and now after that has probably played this odd looking move uh, bishop to f1 here protecting this uh, rook over here so the idea is that if kapo is allowed to push this pawn to f6 the knight will have to move which will render this rook defenseless and there could be a counter play uh, you know uh, by attacking could be created by attacking this rook over here undefended rook so now even if you play f6 uh, you know you cannot attack the rook so the rook to e8 move is played by Kapo and Kasparov brings his rook back to d1 so as you can see uh, these back rank pieces are pretty much inactive this knight is inactive not doing the only thing it is doing is uh, preventing this uh, rook from coming over here and uh, this given also uh, uh, contribute to that Kasparov's pieces are actually very much active in the game so there is nothing much uh, Petrosian can do and his pieces are pretty much inactive so he brings his rook back to f8 Kasparov just plays a3 an insignificant move so queen goes to g7 and castro is b3 and the king goes back again to g8 so look how helpless the position is for Petrosian, and then he brings his rook to d8 and castro brings his queen to c5 and basically as of this position Petrosian resigned the game because 
the following continuation will happen the the queue in exchange will happen but uh, this you know a rook will be captured first so the queen will try to cut it off and uh, uh, the rook will capture the queen back and uh, and the king will capture back and this rook will infiltrate the seventh rank and after this f6 there's a check and uh, this pawn will be got and the knight will try to come in come back to the game uh, because you cannot just uh, and uh, this will allow the capture of this pawn as well and the king will go here and the pawn push will happen supporting the knight and also pushing the pawn and after that uh, the capture this will be the final position where Kasparov is up by two pawns and uh, Petrosian's pieces the rook is totally inactive and the bishop have some sort of activity and it will be very easy for Kasparov to win this end game with two pawns up already in the match and a very active and uh, rook and a bishop so that's the game thanks very much for watching we'll be back with more such videos